Hello, we're going to start talking about TOXI today. This is a 2D NMR technique that involves homonuclear correlations. It's closely related to the topics that we recently covered of the 1D NMR decoupling experiment and the COSI. So in both 1D NMR decoupling and a COSI experiment, you see hydrogen to hydrogen couplings two to three bonds away. In the TOXI, we see the entire spin system. And this can be useful for identifying large interconnected systems or mixtures. So we're going to look at a simple system and then we'll look at a couple more systems, one with a interconnected large system and one with a mixture. These are also in your workbook. So this is ethyl butanoate and this is the cozy for it. So we would expect to see coupling in the cozy for this part of the molecule and for this part of the molecule. These are separate spin systems uh, because they don't couple to each other. So if we call this A and B and then C, D and E, this is F or whatever you want to call it, but we're just going to label the ones that the protons. So A, or let's start with B, is next to the oxygen, so we know it's here. And the cozy correlation shows us that it's, in, it's coupled to a methyl a triplet that's overlapping another one. So it, the one that is bonding to this one is the one that's a little bit further downfield. So A is coupled to B, and you see there are no other couplings, just A to B. C is coupled to D. C is next to the carbonyl, so it's our next highest peak, C. And C is coupled to D, so this has to be D. And D is coupled to E, which is our other methyl group. So everything works well, and we can see the couplings for the two spin systems. And this is the other spin system. But in the toxy, if you look, A is coupled to B because that's one spin system. But if you look, C, D, E are all coupled to each other. It doesn't matter which way you go or on which one you see them all coupled into each other. So that's the talks you can tell you. You can just quickly look at it and it'll form this complete box of everything that's connected to each other. It's not great for piecing it together, but it's quick to identify a spin system. So here's uh, alanine which is an amino acid. So we're, soon, we're just going to look at it as, as if it's one amino acid. And it's amino acid with the amine, the carboxylic acid, or if it's part of a peptide, an amine amide there. And it has an alpha carbon. So amine, alpha carbon, carbonyl amine, alpha carbon, or nitrogen. And then it has an alpha hydrogen and the methyl group, because that's the side chain in alanine. And if we look at the toxi of this, we see that everybody is connected to each other. These three, the NH, the H, and the methyl group. So you see the full connectivity. Now, if you're looking at a long peptide chain, these have distinct, the alpha, the shift for the alpha carbon of specific amino acids are quite distinct. And, and so are the NHs. So here's a slice where we're just looking at the NHs compared to the rest of the side chains. And you can quickly see here's one amino acid, here's another amino acid, and here's another amino acid. This is a tripeptide. And I could then go look these up in data tables and figure out who has an NH at 8.38 connecting to a side chain with 3P. So you could quickly determine who the amino acids are in a tripeptide or larger until it starts to overlap each other. Similarly, here's a mixture of two related compounds. This is a reaction mixture from the literature. And it's, if you did a cozy, these peaks would be on top of each other. It would be hard to tell them apart. But if you do a simple toxy here, you can just go, OK, this is all part of one compound, which is connected into all of these peaks, right? These are connected into this. Um, so this is connected in to that. 
and that all connects over to these peaks and these peaks. And this one should be, that should have been drawn in there. And then if I um, look, these all peaks, I wish I had a different color. Um, let me see here, let me grab a different color for my pen. These then are the other compound. And now that you've identified the two compounds, all of these peaks you can see are all interconnected to each other. And these are, there's an only one spin system for each of these molecules. So you know that the in here in the blue, except for this one stray dot, is all one of the compounds. And this one is the other one. And this one has the aldehyde. So you can immediately identify which peaks, the red, belong to the aldehydic peak, uh, compound in the mixture, and the blue belong to the epoxide in the structure. So this is uh, quite a useful tool for very specific tasks like that. And we'll see it when we get to monomer polymers and um, maybe 3D MMR.